Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena we are playing the second deck in the Mono Black Color Challenge with the Aristocrats. This deck is called the Aristocrats because of a deck that gained a lot of value and did a lot of awesome things by sacrificing its own creatures back in an ancient Pro Tour. I think it was Dark Ascension, and Tom Martell won the Pro Tour, the Pro Tour with this deck. And one of the cards in the deck was Falconrath Aristocrat, and there was another Aristocrat in it too, which name is escaping me, but somebody will tell me in comments. But there were two cards that had the name Aristocrat in them. They were vampires. They sacrificed their own things to do awesome stuff. And so Aristocrats has become a code word name in Magic for a deck that benefits from sacrificing its own creatures. This deck uses Cauldron Familiar and Witch's Oven, which is a combo I'm sure you've seen a few times by now, but it also pushes the sacrifice theme further with Midnight Reaper, Rankle, Ayara, the Priest of the Forgotten Gods, Liliana Dreadhorde General, and God Eternal Bantu. So all kinds of ways to sacrifice your cards for value while the opponent gets much less of a pleasant experience. To make dorks, we have the Lazatep Reaper, the Gutter Bones, the Orzhov Enforcer, and the Dreadhorde Invasion. All of those kind of put some creatures on the board in a repeatable fashion. There's a way to recur the Gutter Bones. The Enforcer is two creatures in one body. The Reaver is two creatures in one body. It keeps your Priest of the Forgotten Gods doing what it needs to do. And then we have two Murderous Riders, which are glue. We Sometimes we just got to kill something. It's just got to die. The Oko must get crushed. You know, something like that. And I have a gruesome menagerie because it makes me really happy when I have an Ayara on the board and three creatures in the graveyard, one of them being an Ayara at different costs, and I cast a gruesome menagerie and I see a stack of Ayara triggers burn the opponent to death. Hopefully we'll get to do that here in the video. The mana base has four castles, which I kind of said we're going to, this is probably going to be a staple in all of the black decks for this week. So... I think that's a good introduction to the deck, why it's called the Aristocrats and the cards in the deck. If you are asking about why I don't play a card like Knight of the Ebon Legion and a deck like this, what I'm usually asking with my card is one, does it create a benefit from sacrificing or sacrifice things themselves? Priest, Ayara, Midnight Reaper are examples of this. Or two, do I want to sacrifice it? And Gutter Bones, the Enforcer, and Lazatep Reaver are examples of that. Knight of the Ebon Legion doesn't fit I, any of that criteria. It doesn't create value by giving us a way to sacrifice. It doesn't create value when something is sacrificed, and I would never want to sacrifice it myself. So the Knight of the Ebon Legion, while being an awesome card that will be in most of our black decks, gets to stay home this time. All right, that's enough of the talking and the intro from me. Let's go start off the aristocratic shenanigans. Let's start the nonsense. Let's go. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Puts a little pressure on the opponent. Hopefully draws some cards with the Reaper and the Rankle to find uh, the goodies. The really, the, the nice stuff. The stuff that gets the job done. Here, kitty kitty. Send a message. The cat is in the building. Skeleton. Okay, well look at that draw. Now I know they have a sanitarium skeleton. It doesn't make priest the greatest thing, but we can gain a lot from our priest activations. Hello. Well, our priest activates first because, you know, on the play, we're a superior magician. Okay. So let's play the reaver and then get the reaper. I'm not ready to sacrifice this midnight reaper just yet. Let's give up the cat and the token, the army. The opponent will give up the skeleton most certainly, but now they have to have a reaver if they want to activate their priest, or they have to have a couple of one drops, which is not easy. And I have a Lazatep reaver to sacrifice, and now each sacrifice draws me a card. So we're set up nicely. Our opponent also a fan of mono black week here on the channel CGB. And they are going to get an activation out of this. <laughs> Reading that Midnight Reaper though, probably jelly. Probably jelly, I, I get it. But 
When your deck does the thing, you gotta do the thing. Scorpion's gotta be a scorpion. All right, their mana gets back gutter bones. That's probably good for us. And here is the guttery one. What's in the graveyard? One, two, and a, almost a three. I think we can actually do this this turn. So we play a gutter bones. We activate a priest. We target the opponent. We hit submit. We sacrifice these. We draw two cards from this and make two mana. Oh, we did find an Ayara. I kind of want the Ayara to be on the board when we'd make this gruesome menagerie play. So maybe I just should. Maybe I should rankle here. But next turn I can't play Ayara five, six, seven. I can't play Ayara and menagerie anyway. Yeah, we can, we can though wait on the menagerie. It'll be sweet. It doesn't have to be this turn. Then we can play this oven. Can sacrifice this priest. Yeah, yeah, hear me out, okay? The priest is going to get sacrificed anyway to the rankle. Then we can bring you back and sacrifice you to the rankle instead. But we also get a free drain out of the experience. All of the things. We'll discard one of the castles. We shouldn't need it. Ooh, our opponent uses red. A mayhem devil up in there. Sitting pretty. Now we want to next turn probably play a Yara and Priest. And the turn after that, Gruesome Menagerie is an awesome drain effect. It's possible I should have discarded the Ayara, because when you get it back with like a Reaver and a one drop, it drains for like one, two, three, four. But four is not quite lethal yet. Our opponent has the Mayhem Devil. They have the Cauldron Familiar. They're putting it together. So here is a ya ya. Here is another priest. Making the opponent sacrifice here isn't that good. They have the Cauldron Familiar. So we'll just do the discard draw engine. And we'll just do the draw engine. I like my hand a lot. I'm a, I am a fan of throwing a lot of things in ovens to drain my opponent out with little cat nonsense. Yeah, this um, so this game, we're getting to do a lot of the cool things we want to do. The main reason we're winning right now is because we were on the play. That's just the bottom line. Because Stone Cold said so. So, They've got, okay, they're going with Claim the Firstborn. We'll respond to Claim the Firstborn, which takes control of our creature uh, with power. With Converted Man cost three or less until end of turn, untap it, it gains haste. So they can steal it, use it against us. We don't want that. Here's an attack. I'm not gonna block. I can take the hit, I'm okay. And let's bring back the cat. Our opponent gets to deal another point of damage. Because every time we sacrifice something from either side, the Mayhem Devil triggers, but it doesn't matter. Cat's gonna enter the battlefield, trigger the Ayara next turn, the oven combo. Drains them out easily enough. Rankle attacks, it's all over. So, two Ayaras, a Reaver, and a Gutter Bones. It's another one, two, three curve of mediocrity. But if we draw some of the good stuff, we'll be in a we'll be rolling. And Ayara, of course, can sacrifice things to get deeper in the deck. We don't have a removal spell. If the opponent just comes out guns ablazing, we'll be in trouble. So here's Gutter Bones. We'll try to take up some battlefield position. Hollowed Fountain. Could be anything. From good old blue-white control that nobody plays, to Jeskai Fires, to Golos. And the opponent's going to hit Gutter Bones with a Calculated Dismissal. I mean, that's a card. Let's go ahead and get the castle on the board in case we end up wanting something to discard later. And we'll play our Reaver. It has an ETB effect, so it's less likely to get targeted by the Dismissal, although the army may. If the opponent has more of these. 
two bacons. So Rankle is Dece against Planeswalker decks. Not great, just Dece. For the most part, this is trouble. So let's see how greedy the opponent is with Teferi, because Teferi is very good against our cards. Are they going to plus here or minus? They're going to minus on the token? Okay. Well, I guess the Reaper now has to be blocked. Yeah. Do you think our opponent's going to have Deafening Clarion ready next turn? This is not good against another Teferi either. This is tough. I Against Deafening Clarion, we can get completely blown out by just about anything we play. Regardless, we have Rankle next turn. It's just how much we give up first. I think I'm best off going for Priest, not because my opponent is actually going to give me something that the Sacrifice trigger will be good against, but just because I, now I have multiple bodies to attack Planeswalkers if the opponent lacks a Sweeper. But we're in a tough spot. We pretty much were from the moment the game started, being on the draw against this style of deck. Murderous Rider interacts directly with Planeswalkers, but most of our cards don't. And most of them will be underpowered and require us to have creatures and little combinations and synergies on the board. Planeswalkers don't care about that. They just take over a game themselves. Well, our opponent is tanking. Maybe there's something awkward about their hand. Shock. Deputy. Okay, Rankle's coming for you. It does mean we have to let Teferi live for a turn. I could kill the Teferi, but then I wouldn't get the trigger, and I need the trigger. Alright, uh, discard a card, sacrifice a creature, and I think we want the draw as well. We want to make the game shorter. The losing one life part adds up. Um, tempting to discard one of these, but I think I'm, I, I've drawn plenty of land in the last several games. Maybe that will continue. Okay. So we could give up Gutter Bones because we can get back later, or we can give up the Reaver because it's small. I'll go with the Reaver here. Big turn. Mobilize District. If our opponent is Jeskai, they're missing the red. If they have Time Wipe in their hand, they can't cast it because they have three colorless sources. So there is something awkward about their draw, probably. Let's try this. Deputy again. Ooh, gutsy. Because if I have any creature, I just make them sacrifice it, and I do. All right, those go. Opponent's life total goes down. Rankle comes back. Draw a card. Reaver. We have two black mana right now. Let's play another first of Lock Thwain. I definitely am not making anybody sacrifice a card, but I can make somebody discard a card. I can also just kill this Teferi. I think that's worth it. This card is annoying, and I don't want the opponent to have any option to wrath on my turn. I don't know. Could just be blue-white super friends. Two deputies and callous dismissal are weird card choices. Some kind of an unusual control build. But what even are the blue-white super friends? There aren't that many good ones. Teferi and Narset have to be the best. Okay. There's the time wipe. Now our hand is much less good. But, let's play him out, try to get some damage in. Just a couple of nerds trying to attack some th someone. <laughs> a few mobilized districts now. Another Reaver. 
Well. We could just make a super bold attack and hope the opponent doesn't activate their mobilized district, but I don't think that's the way this is going to go. Regardless, we get to get a, but a butter bones, a gutter bones. Butter bones sounds like a Harry Potter thing. And we'll keep playing it out, because we have the castle. We'll make the opponent wrath us again. They seem like a deck that would have a lot of wraths, but we'll make them do it. We gotta get through all this somehow. And when we're empty-handed, this card draws cheap. Opt. Okay. Weird. See, I would have played the opt on my turn, I think. When you have this much mana. Thanks, scry to the bottom. Another land. Hello. So, let's attack and get the opponent to do something. They would probably power up a mobilized district. And that may constrict their ability to cast something like a counter spell. I guess they still... They don't have absorb mana up. You wouldn't play blue-white outside of absorb, but they do have all these colorless lands. They could be playing Sinister Sabotage. It's possible. Down to six. So, we got the opponent to activate their district. We'll go for Liliana here. Resolves. Well, minus, because I want to draw cards and kill their district. I really want to draw some cards. We'll give up a Gutter Bones. We'll give up a Reaver. I like keeping the afterlife creature on the battlefield so I have a presence left over after a Wrath. But yeah, I think trading those for cards is the right play. And those are some... Those are some improvements, for sure. Ooh, the opponent can attack my Liliana. That is something I didn't think about. Ooh. I think it's gonna work out, though. I think it's still gonna work out. Because if the opponent attacks the Liliana but doesn't have interaction for the Rankle, we win. Because this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's kind of bizarre, but I think this could work out. Well, no, it looks like our opponent's going to play a Planeswalker, and that gains two life. Everybody's favorite. I don't know about bouncing one of these little things. It seems like the big creatures are what you have to be afraid of. This mana tapping break here in the video. Brought to you by our opponent, but a good time to mention CoolStuffInc.com. I would like to thank them for sponsoring the channel. The opponent... Hmm. Narset. Minus two. Look at the top four. Do they have another land to... Let's see, would that activate the district? I don't think that's enough. And they keep a Conclave Tribunal. What is your deck? The white cards I like. Okay. Eliana is still alive. How did this happen? Alright, Rankle. Take me to the river. I guess I'm not sacrificing any creatures, although I could draw a card with that sacrifice trigger. I think I should just kill the Planeswalkers. Just kill the planies. Only time will tell. And we'll play another enforcer to take on the district. The opponent won Conclave Tribunal the Liliana probably, but they still have to do something about the board. And I've got this God Eternal Bantu to cash in some of my other crappy cards. Teo the Shield Mage. You have Hexproof. We'll have to keep that in mind. Minus two, create an O3. All right. What do I have that relies on the opponent not having hexproof? Priest of the Forgotten Gods. It's a good one. It's a good one. I am exhausted. Bye, Lily. Yep. 
think it's just turn you sideways and smash you face. And then bond to some of the crap into real cards. There's nothing to make the opponent discard, so I may as well play my land. Get him. Kill him. Bash them to bits. It was a life draw card. Let's do it. Uh, as far as sacrifice a creature, I could give up like my Orzhov Enforcer, and then my opponent has to give up their O3. But I don't gain much from the sacrifice, and I'm about to gain a card from the sac from playing Bantu. I guess it makes them O1 Spirit, or a 1-1 Spirit, and then I sacrifice that anyway. No, let's keep it like this. This is fine. Let's trade some of our little cards for big things. And some excess land. So, hmm, we can get back the gutter bones and play that. We can also play the witch's oven and another enforcer. Which is, what's better against a wrath? I guess the oven is better. It's also better against exile effects. Lots of land still available. Lots and lots. Here's the wall. Talk to the wall. Not to the face. Dude, you're so retro. <laughs> Did you hear that, everyone? Teo's so funny. He's so funny. There's the cat. Let's slow roll that. Well, I guess we can sacrifice it if we hit with the rankle. So let's not slow roll it. Here's my cat. There are many like it, but this one is mine. How's your face? They're dead to the flyers alone. They need some kind of answer. Okay. Ah, you still have to enter full control to get a moment there to use the Murderous Rider. I had hoped they'd fix that, much the way they fixed the Legion War Boss thing before combat that always make made a um that always made a goblin token, but they haven't. You still have to enter full control mode if after they turn that into a creature you want to kill it. Break the wall down For those about to rock Anyway. Get him. Finish it. Yeah, this curve is fire. This curve is fire. We'll be on the draw. Our opponent opens with a mountain. Is it mono red? Our first mono red of the day. I was starting to wonder. Well, we might need to munch on some food from the oven. Also, I don't anticipate Priest living very long, but maybe we want to play Midnight Reaper first in case we can draw out some burn. Yeah, I mean, you don't really have to think very hard with an opening like that now, do you? Okay, we didn't draw a Murderous Rider. If our opponent just has the frickin' Spitfire, the game might already be over. I guess I can disrupt them a little by making them deal with the Priest of the Forgotten Gods. But I'd rather have the Witches Oven out to make some food anytime the opponent's going to point a direct damage spell at one of my creatures. So I'm gonna slow roll it a little, just a little. The three life from the food we make could matter a lot. It could be a thing. But we do have to draw some kind of removal for the Spitfire, or the game's just over. That's not it. Well, I'll get the Priest online. And we'll pass the turn. 
And now I'm probably dead because these games are fun, interactive, and just excellent. <laughs> we'll see. There's a runaway steam kin. Second cavalcade? Okay, sure. You might have wanted to keep your steamkin on one power if I'm not going to... It depends on whether or not I'm dead from this attack. I might be. Yeah, close. We almost played a game of magic, but we were dead on turn four. Uh, okay. It's like that. It's like that, y'all. What's a boy to do? What's a boy to do? Sure. This looks like a fun group of cards to play together. Here comes the oven. Then comes the invasion, most likely. I don't think the opponent has a turn one play that would make me want the enforcer. I guess a, a Knight of the Ebon Legion might do it. And then the Ayara, and then the Ranky, Ranka boy. Yeah, this will be fun. Our opponent's opening up on Winds, Windscar Craig into Hero, so they're they're up to some nonsense. Ayaya, -ay -ay. drain them, and pass. Let's see if the opponent came packing removal. Or how many creatures they can make before Rankle can get rid of their hero. Uh, I was trying to think if I want to tap the Ayara to draw a card here, but I think I just want to use the oven this turn. Second hero. Okay. Is there a multicolored spell involved? Not yet. So, we'll throw some army in an oven. Make a new one, which triggers the drain. And yeah, I think this is a ya 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 yara uh, rankle time. Just make try to make the opponent sacrifice a priest, or a not a priest, a hero. My words don't work today, guys. Thanks for bearing with me. Thanks for dealing with ya boy. That's somebody else's thing. I keep trying to steal it, though. Thanks for dealing with your card player who uses no hip slang. There. That sounds more like me. Thanks for dealing with your gamer. Putting up with your buddy. It's me, it's just CGB. All right, so away goes our 1-1. One, one. Away goes one of these heroes of Precinct 1. And we will end the turn we're not quite spamming the board with things to draw cards with the Ayara yet, but that's to come. Prison Realm, I think that has to target Rankle, right? Rankle too good. So let's draw a card with a Yaya. And yes, I know I'm mispronouncing that. Some of you have figured out by now that I mispronounce things however I want to on purpose. Gotta get comments somehow. It's hard in here for a YouTuber. Between clickbait and comment bait, like, this is real professional stuff. All right. Maybe this will just bring rage scoopage. I don't know. So rude. Let's also play this gutter bones because what we can do is sacrifice it. And then we still have a one one or something to draw a card with a yeah yeah. We should probably just deal the damage, to be honest. But I like drawing cards. Yeah, we should deal the damage. Down to six. Lose a life. And sacrifice a creature. And it can be you. And let's end the turn. So... Deafening Clarion. Nice inclusion in your Hero of Precinct 1 deck. Oh, magic, you never cease to amaze me. We may as well make a food. They're thinking, got him. Never saw it coming, did ya? <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> that combo. <laughs> All right. Here comes the priest. Here comes the reaper. We'll just get right back to the nonsense of drawing a ton of cards and trying to drain the opponent out. Just trying to win the resource war. Away oh ya. Holy crap. That's a big booty angel. It's the JLo of angels right there. Five toughness? Are you kidding me? And now you has tramps. Now you are a trampling creature. What do you think? I think we keep the Reaper around. Let's keep stockpiling food. Just in case we draw a cat. Ta <laughs> Ta-da! Boom. Target you. Give up these. Draw some card. Make some mana. Down to two. Kitty can get there, right? I think Kitty can get there. Oh yeah, Kitty gets there. Here, Kitty Kitty. Back in the graveyard. Just when you thought you were out, Kitty pull you back in. And notice how, like, the instant speedness of the oven and the food and the sacrifice trigger, it's, like, kind of awesome. You can put all this on the stack if you need to, like, in response to some heal. And that's game! Sure. I haven't seen you today, it feels like. And a menagerie can be fun. Got a fancy paid for Vraska. Mmm. We got a fully formed cat. We got the sweet, sweet sleeves. Yep. Yep. Obviously, we're dealing with a pure professional. And we will have to defeat them. Let's go ahead and send a message. First blood. Missing on two drops with this deck is annoying. We have so many, but it looks like we're going to have to focus on the bigger things here. Zeta. Pelt collection. I'll go for this Midnight Reaper. We do have the, in case we do curve out right into the Gruesome Menagerie, we do have one, two, and three available. I'm not in a hurry to use the Rider. I assume something bigger is coming. There's a Midnight Reaper. Draw a card. I imagine Zyrtog Goblin wants to get busy. Ooh, you both do? Cool. I want to kill this very much before the Bone Crusher Giant makes it bigger. So let's deploy the dorks. I don't think we need the oven here. Or do we? This will make a 2-2. Is that what I want or do I want two bodies? Well, I guess this way we can at least try to block down the goblin. Ex exchange exchanging resources is okay when we have this massive reload on the horizon. We kind of want the Reaver in the graveyard in a way if we draw this land. Sure. So the opponent wants that for a mana source, so we need to kill it. And we do draw the Menagerie. Yeah, I think it's ride or die. Our opponent might have another Domri, which would be, would be pretty bad for us. We are down to 12, but now the oven is online. We have two Reavers. We can try to trade them off if the opponent wants to attack. They have a Bone Crusher Giant they can play. And here it comes. So does the opponent feel frisky? If they want to get into the red zone, we can get our Reaver to the graveyard. Otherwise, the oven can put it there. So if we block like this, the opponent can kill our 2-2 army, which isn't really what we're looking for. But if we block like this and make a food, then Menagerie brings all the nonsense back. Oh, hi. I guess I want you on the battlefield first. 
And we can get back our gutter bones with our spare mana this turn, so we don't waste it. All right, if we can keep this around for a turn, it's very good with Gruesome Menagerie. And if you go to the graveyard, we can get you back with Gruesome Menagerie. I have a feeling that someone's about to be ambushed. Indeed. So this isn't a fight, right? No, it's not. So I may as well use the oven here. Stock up on my food. Hoarding for the winter, that's my game. Definitely get the Bone Crusher dead if we can. The opponent may have a second Bone Crusher. Nope. Growth Chamber Guardian, that's... I mean, that's a value. That's a value engine without question, but... I think we're good to go now. At least we're going to make some something entertaining of it. Hold on. Can I take Siggy Baxies? Because I could have played this, thrown it in the oven, and then gotten it back. Oh, well. So, do I want you or you? Like, you draw cards for sure. You drain. I guess I'll take you. I'm a little nervous that I should have got the Reaper, though. Because I'll need those cards, too. But that life bump is pretty important. Ouch. That's gonna leave a mark. So that's 12, we can go to one. Better, best not to. Make some food. Don't know how we get out of this. I feel like I kind of did my big trick with the uh, Gruesome Menagerie, and it wasn't good enough, because Questing Beast is a frickin' house. Don't feel like a land off the top is going to get me there. But we do have all this food to eat, so let's not give up just yet. All right. Where's the blocks? This is a block where we can kill something for sure. This is a block where we can draw a card. And this is six damage, but we can gain six, or this is eight damage, but we can gain six life. And we're gaining two more life here. Just don't know if it's good enough. We'll try. All right, let's go ahead and draw a card from the Reaver. Gonna need some cards. It's too slow. Sacrifice of food. Go to 10. Sorry, nine. Go to 12. What's up, can we draw like a Liliana? Does that do something? An update is available. Please restart. No, I'm busy. Huh. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of creatures. I feel a little bit behind in this game. What do you guys think? Am I in trouble? Is this, is this bad? I think this is bad, team. Trigger the Ayaria. Get the gutter bones back. Play the gutter bones. Block, block. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. Yep. That is the game. Ouch. I guess I'll go restart and we'll see what this update looks like. Sure. 3 and 2. The breaking point. Will we make money on our event, or will we lose money on our event? That is the question at hand. We're on the play with a hand of tiny little dorks. We're going to try to sneak some damage through so that we can pull it off in the end game, and perhaps it's going to be our first encounter with Golos. We better get the oven cooking quickly. When you see a guild gate, you know what's coming, and you just gotta find a way to get there. 
And right now it looks like I just drew another one of my expensive cards when I have two land, and that is not where you want to be. Okay, is this a growth spiral? Looks like a growth spiral. I'll operate under under the assumption it will be a spiral until I'm until I learn otherwise. So, end step. Oven. Cat. Cat. Out of oven. Feed cat pieces of its own self. It's gross. Disgusting. Unacceptable behavior. Just come on now. I'm just doing this thing. I'm sure you've seen it before. Surely, opponent. Surely you know how this goes. The cat comes back the very next day. It's like a song about it and stuff. Third land, sure. Schmork. Down to 11, going to 10, and we have an enforcer. So we're doing a good job throwing some punches, trying to get the opponent into the danger zone as quickly as possible. There's the growth spiral. Just the best card in the deck. I've heard suggestion that Field of the Dead is going to be banned in a, a cha when they moved a ban announcement. And then somebody was like, they need to ban Gross Spiral, that's the broken card. Mm. Hot take. Hot take. But is it true? Here's Fires of Invention. <laughs> oh boy. I love it. It looks like the opponent doesn't have something to do this turn, but we can probably expect lots of fireworks next turn. We need to draw something else to add to some gas to the fire, and a Yaya would be great. That's a swamp. All right, your turn, down to six. I imagine something terrible is about to happen to me. I hate you, I hate you so much. You don't even know. You're the worst. But if the opponent doesn't wrath me or make 20 zombies, well, we'll see. They might just be grabbing another Field of the Dead and then playing a circuitous route to make a bajillion zombies right now. And at that point, we can't get through anymore. And it's like six turns before the Cauldron Familiar can burn our opponent out. Rankle off the top, though, could be lethal. Nope, Blossoming Sands gain life. Yeah, every one of those is another turn on the clock. Yeah, this draw really hasn't panned out. We drew, like, we kept a hand with one of our big expensive payoffs, but we drew a second one, at, and it was just bad timing. It was terrible timing. Yep, so this Golos can fetch another non-Field of the Dead land, then Fabled Passage can sacrifice to get another non-Field of the Dead, non-Forest, and then the opponent has two zombies to block our creatures. And the game is almost over. Almost over. A tapped Evolving Wilds. So that's to make more zombies next turn. That's what that is. Creative. They can also make the zombie at instant speed. So if we think that they only have one zombie, we know we're wrong about that. We know they have secret two zombies from Fabled Passage. All right. We'll draw a card because we drew nothing else that we could use our mana for. Then we'll... Sack the kitty and get back the kitty because, yeah, reasons. And the gruesome menagerie for everybody who loves this card and for as shiny as it can be is looking pretty sad right now. It is not going to help us close this game. Another gutter bones isn't either. Let's send him in. If the Enforcer turns into a Flyer, that can be a good thing. We know the opponent can make another Zombie. I'm hoping that they want to block these and not the Cat. Plus, the opponent's going to start making a million things here. I don't think they can activate their Golos next turn, though, because they fetched Evolving Wild, so that's kind of the bright side. Okay, yep, they can block this way too. I was hoping they'd be too afraid to block with their Golo, so it was basically a bluff. So, who wants to become food? I guess you get to be food. Yep, 
And now we get a 1-1's Flying Spirit, who can hopefully pick away. Because that's all we can do from now on for the end of the game, is pick away and hope the opponent isn't able to gain life or weasel out. Not great. <laughs> to put it mildly, this is not great. Drawing in a Yara would be nice. Oop. Wait, that didn't gain life. Our opponent only has one gate. Maybe that's hope. Maybe hope is for idiots. That does turn on... Does that turn on Tireless Pilgrim? Looks like it may. One, two, three. Yeah. So our opponent hits two spells. I'm guessing that Circuitous Route will be one of them. That's a lot of zombies. Come on, Rankle. That Grazer should be the other one, if they're smart, getting a Reach creature. Yep. Yep, Rankle's time to show up was last turn. Oh, man, we are dead. Oh. You feel my soul getting sucked out, everybody? Ugh. Does Field of the Dead need to be banned? What do you guys think? Does it? May as well do my best to stay alive here. Wonder why you didn't attack with this zombie. The world may never know. Eight, nine, ten, we're at 22. All right. Yeah, we'll plus. Try to make the opponent deal with this. Try to buy a few turns. No point in attacking when the opponent has the Grazer. Yeah, what's the point of a six mana Planeswalker in this world? The opponent doesn't sacrifice the Evolving Wilds. Wow. Um, I'm really surprised by that. They would have had 10 zombies. That's 20 damage. Perhaps they thought they weren't going to get to lethal anyway this turn. Another root and a drawn from dreams. Dear God. Good God, man. Stop already. Stop, he's already dead. <laughs> Not quite dead. That's a lie. Look at your top seven. Pick two. I'll be over here. I'll be twiddling my thumbs trying to come up with something clever to say for YouTube. Hey, everybody. How's it going? How do you like Mono Black Week? The Aristocrats are running into some trouble. I will say they had a really good uh, seven-win run on stream the other day, but that stream got muted because I played awesome music because of donations from some of my subs on Twitch, so uh, it might be a hard video to find. And we're not quite done, but it looks like this is going to be en the end of this particular run. But I want to say that I actually like the deck a lot more than it performed. I think that our loss to Mono Red was just kind of a joke. I think that our loss to the Gruul deck was the power of Questing Beast. And the loss to this deck is... This deck, sh this deck is stupid. Like, like, really? Do you think that Wizards changed the ban window because of what happened at the SCG tour in Philadelphia where every match all day long in day two was a Golos mirror and that rounds took like an extra 20 30 minutes to finish you think that's what happened no attacks are you kidding me that's pretty crazy all right what's what are we sacrificing might as well be the bones draw a card Ayaya, yeah, yeah. come on, let's go. Ayaya. Yeah, yeah. You know, the world is just not not with me on this one. Down to four. It's a lot of cards I can draw, but what do I need to draw? I need ways to get more food. 
to cycle the cauldron familiar, and I need the Ayaya, which I'm not going to hit if I play the God Eternal Bantu. I won't have the mana to cast it. Unless I can somehow throw it in my graveyard, which doesn't happen till the end step. So that doesn't work. That does not work. Let's start here. Draw another card. Close. We need some ovens. Ovens might do. Let's minus the Liliana. Sacrifice two creatures. Let's get these familiars into the graveyard. Down to three. We're gonna draw two cards from it. If it's two ovens, I believe we win. Okay. I need another way to kill something. Eternal Bantu does that. But what about Gruesome Menagerie? Is that just game? Do I have this? It only gets back one one drop. So I don't think, wait, this is two, yes. And I have a land drop? No frickin' way. No frickin' way. And there's the oven anyway. The deck did still love me. It was just taking its sweet frickin' time about it. The opponent can't do anything. They have Fires of Invention sitting there. It's gonna do absolutely no good. They, they can't respond to this. They can't respond. I mean, they can throw their Evolving Wilds and make some zombies. It doesn't matter. Cap for the win! Yes! Why did they skip their attack? Why didn't they kill the Liliana? Did they just want to give me a chance? What was that? Here comes some stuff. We're on the play. Should be good. It's just like hands with this deck are like two or three lands. Some dorks I can cast. Yeah. I mean, they all look underpowered and weak. It's all about how it comes together later. Here's my Reaver. Be afraid. Card looks really bad without Priest of the Forgotten Gods. So, they might have, like, Wildborn Preserver. I guess I should attack and possibly Murderous Rider it. Okay, they take it. All right, I'll make you answer this Reaper then. Well? Yeah, you knew it was Simic Flash, didn't you? At least they don't give a plus one, plus one counter out of the deal. And I get some Rankle Spam. They'll have to answer all of that. The Hoya. What you got? Mike. I'm here to prank you. Derp. Uh, I will kill this quench. That's what I'll play. There we go. Hit him. Take a chunk out of him. This is where I miss Knight of the Ebon Legion in this matchup. In this specific matchup. Alright, let's keep picking on him. If they play a wolf here, we Murderous Rider it. Cutthroat. Okay. Anything else? Then we'll do this on their turn, right? Because they're not going to do anything else on their turn. And we want them to tap out. Oh, okay. They're going to do that. All right. Well. Now you die. And now they say go. Let's see if they have more land or not. They don't. Handful of spells over there. Must be nice. 
Hey ya. All right. Play around quench. I suppose. It is a big, it is a good window for the opponent if they want to resolve a night pack ambusher or something. Okay, they used the counter. I'm actually really happy about that. And now they draw land. What you got? What have you got? It, Arrower is a good blank. Oh, I see. The third essence capture, of course. So playing around quench is a thing, and that's why I did things the way I did there. Down to 14, sure. Aldrin familiar. All right, the ambusher has finally decided to make an appearance. Oh, it's lucky I don't have a way to kill it here. We'll play a Cauldron Familiar. Opponent has an opt, I guess, or they just play on full control mode. Here's God Eternal Bantu. That can be a pain. I may as well sacrifice the things I can get back, draw some cards, and get a reload. Submit that. Not bad. Play another cat. We don't have a witch's oven or anything, unfortunately. Actually, we are kind of low on payoffs. Unsummon? Alright. That's frustrating, of course. And that's what I should have read in the one blue. That unsummon is what was coming. Let's keep you around. We need something to sacrifice to this bond to. Did the opponent draw another counter spell is going to be the question right here. This would hold priority, the castle, so it doesn't necessarily mean anything yet. All right. Do I need to keep a blocker for this? I'm taking seven. Let's draw three. Just in case they have another way to remove the, the Bantu. If they have that, I'm sort of way behind anyway, but this at least discourages the full-on attack. Okay, another Bowerower. Is that game? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yep, that's going to do it. That was a beating. And we go out with four wins. We go out to Evil Nemesis Simic Flash. Our hand was pretty nonsense. We didn't get enough payoffs. The best way to beat Simic Flash, if we ever get that chance again, is Priest of the Forgotten Gods on two. They really struggle with that card, but their hand was just too much that time. I hope you enjoyed these games with the Black Aristocrats deck. I found it very, very fun to sacrifice all the things to all the things and do all the things. The Golos game is going to be a memorable one that I'm going to keep in mind for a very long time, and I'm going to be looking for revenge against Simic Flash. All in all, I think the deck is good, decent, and a few cards away from being competitive. I think it's a very fun deck that you can ladder with, probably well into Platinum and possibly Mythic, with some patience. But I think overall, anytime in Best of One you're on the draw, your cards are really low-powered compared to what you're going to face. And that's a tough spot to be in. If you add more removal to the deck and take it in a mid-range direction, you quickly lose the flavor of the Aristocrats' feel with the Priest of the Forgotten Gods and things of that nature. So I think the deck is where it needs to be. I like the list. If you have some changes you want to propose, tell me in comments. And this is the way I'd play it. So with that in mind, thank you for watching this video. And Black Week, Mono Black Week, Mono Black Color Challenge rolls on tomorrow with another different Mono Black deck. So make sure you come back and check it out. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.